In this video, I'm going to be installing a two and a half inch lift kit on a 2007 Volkswagen Beetle. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Wagon channel. Thank you for joining us here and thanks for jumping on this video to watch us lift the 2007 New Beetle project. This video has been one I've been working on for quite some time. Literally started filming it probably about a month or month and a half ago. And now I'm finally here recording the intro and outro. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to share this all with you. As we jump in, the first thing I wanna ask you guys to do, like all YouTubers, please like this video. It'll help others find it and consider subscribing to this channel. And the last thing, I've recently been given access to a tool called Super Thanks. Since I make a lot of DIYs and how-to videos, if you've ever had one that really just helped you out and you couldn't have done the project without it, or you just wanna say thanks, consider using Super Thanks. You can donate directly to the channel through a comment on one of my videos, and that will help me continue to do projects like this one that are a little off the wall for the new Beetle. The last thing I wanted to mention before we jump into today's video are a couple logistics about this video because it is a little bit longer. One, there are chapters down below. You'll see them in the timeline. Use those to jump to where you wanna go. But first, maybe watch the whole video the first time through. And second, you'll also be able to find those chapters in the description below. So why would you wanna install a lift kit on a Volkswagen Beetle anyways? Well, the simple answer is to gain a little bit more ground clearance. By raising the car up, you'll be able to get over more and different types of terrain. Now the Volkswagen Beetle is just a one wheel drive car, so I'm not hoping to go off-roading or anything quite like that with this, at least at this point. The goal here is to just make a fun family vehicle to take up to our cabin up north. A lot of people up there will take golf carts, raise them up and put lift kits on them and use those as little modes of transportation to get around. Here, I do Volkswagen stuff as of late, so I figured I'd use a VW Bug. And I paid a lot less for this Bug than a lot of people pay for a golf cart. All right, so that covers the why. Now let's talk about how we're actually gonna lift this bug. If you don't know, the Volkswagen Beetle is built on the same platform as the Mark IV Golf. So really what we're looking here for are lift kits that work for either Beetles or Mark IV Golf platforms, and there is actually quite a few options out there. Now what I chose to do is to go with what I would consider is a pre-assembled kit of parts. The other options out there are really taking pieces and parts from other cars, modifying mounting points, and making them work. And there's a ton of ideas and options out there. But for me, I chose to go with this pre-assembled kit of parts from a company called VW High Life or VWLiftKits.com. And I went with them for a couple different reasons. Number one is a lift kit consists of a lot of different parts and takes a lot of different research to find out what's going to work for your car. VWLiftKits.com has already done that work for you and seemed to be a pretty trusted provider. So I knew that by placing an order with them, everything was gonna be included in the kit and was gonna work on my vehicle. And that leads me to two, which is really that I didn't need to modify anything. Everything was built to work with the existing systems in my car. And all the pieces and parts in this kit come from pretty reputable manufacturers. So my shocks and struts are from Bilstein and the springs in this are from Moog. Now, after placing this order and doing this install, I have a third reason why I would choose this option. So as soon as I placed the order on VWLiftKits.com, the owner emailed me and reached out to me, not knowing anything that I had to do with a YouTube channel, just delivering digital installation instructions, sending me tire sizing recommendations, and asking me if I needed any help with anything else, which was totally beyond my expectation. And I will say once we traded some emails and I shared that I'd probably be making a video on it, they even included a few upgraded pieces and parts for me at no cost. All right, so that's a lot of talk about the parts. Let's take a look at the parts that we're gonna be installing on the Beetle now. So what you're seeing here is all the parts that are included in the kit and uh, split into left and right side. So we're just gonna cover one side. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the new strut. This is a Bilstein HD strut. Uh, it's a, has a little bit more travel as well as just in general a beefier strut than what's stock. Next we have a new strut bushing as well as a new strut bearing and the spacer that will help us get a little bit more lift. There's also a strut cover to protect the strut from dirt and grime, a new bump stock, 
as well as brand new springs. Uh, they're going to be a little bit taller and a little bit beefier. Now moving on to the rear. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the shock here. It's also a Bilstein HD shock. Again, more travel and a little bit beefier. Also, we have a shock extender that's going to mount on top of that shock and give you even more travel for the larger springs and spacers. In the kit, you also get a shock mount that's brand new. You get a shock cover, a new bump stock, taller and beefier springs. And last but not least, there is a spacer kit that gets installed on the bottom of that shock and is fixed in place with a, you know, through a tension system uh, and a screw mount that goes underneath. So now that we know what's going in the car, this helps us know what needs to come off of the car. And that's what we're going to go do right now. And while I'm in there, I'm also going to be replacing the control arms on the car as well as the tie rods. So you'll be seeing those installations as well. All right, let's get this party started. So I'm starting with the rear of the car and first I'm gonna remove the lower shock bolt. Now I loosen it up, but before I'm gonna drop that down and pull it out, I'm gonna support it with a jack and then I'll do the same on the other side and then I'll be able to lower the entire rear suspension. Then I'm gonna move up to the upper shock mount and remove the two bolts that hold that in place. Once I get that removed, now we can go ahead and pull out the rear spring. Since the rear of this Beetle is not an independent suspension, you're going to have to do both sides simultaneously and support both sides with a jack. Now let's move to the front. Uh, first I'm going through because this car is old and very rusty and hitting everything with some PB Blaster or whatever lubricant of your choice to get those freed up. Then I'm going to start to loosen the three bolts that hold the ball joint into the control arm right underneath the rotor. Next, I'm going to move over to the tie rod and disconnect that. Now, this is a crappy angle to show you what I'm doing here, but I'm removing the sway bar end link from the control arm. Next, I removed the axle nut while the rotor was still on, so that way my wife could step on the brakes and make sure that the axle wouldn't spin. Uh, I had to use a crazy large socket that I had to special order, and you probably will too unless you work on Volkswagens all the time. Then I went through and removed the caliper, and then finally removed the caliper carrier. Quick time out here, if you're noticing that some of the parts that I'm taking off look really new, it's because they are. Uh, apparently I forgot to film a few things here and it's probably because these were some of the most difficult situations I was in trying to get parts off. Uh, but what I did is I took the install portion of the video and put it in reverse so you could at least see the process of how it should come off. Now's the time to disconnect the hub from both the strut, the axle, and the control arm. So first you're going to want to start to remove it from the control arm and slide the axle out of place. And then finally, using your strut spreader tool, once you remove that pinch bolt, go ahead and insert that, and then slowly rock your hub back and forth down the strut and remove it. Now on the beetle, in order to get to the strut nut that's on top, you do need to remove this plastic cover that's located underneath the windshield wipers. So that means the windshield wipers have to come off. Uh, I used some blue tape just to mark where they were at and how they were placed. Uh, then I went through and removed the two nuts that are hidden under little caps underneath those windshield wipers. And finally, they are a pain. You have to break them loose. Uh, I used a rubber mallet in my hand to kind of wiggle them back and forth. Uh, and they finally came loose for me. Once those are removed, you can go ahead and remove this plastic cowl that covers up the strut bolts. So grab your socket and start to loosen those. As you get them loose, you're going to want to make sure that you support the strut underneath so it doesn't crash to the ground. And loosen that up and pull it out. Now I'm working on a few pieces that are not directly related to this lift, but I am going to be removing the control arms. Uh, the control arm bushings were bad and needed to be replaced, so I'm pulling out the two bolts that hold those in place. However, at least in my case, the oil pan for the transmission 
and the oil pan for the engine were both in the way so I had to lower uh, that subframe a little bit without pulling it all the way out so that way those bolts would slide out. While we're in here we're also going to be removing and replacing the tie rods on this beetle. So first I'm removing the boot although I quickly realized first I need to remove the tie rod end first so I get that loosened up take that off important note here count the number of rotations it takes to remove that so that way you can get your alignment back to normal or as close to normal as possible you should always get an alignment after replacing the tie rods once you get that tie rod end removed then you're going to grab your tie rod removing tool yes you need a specific tool to do this well uh, and remove the tie rod from the steering rack Whew. all right that was a lot and obviously i know i made it look like it all went by really fast but that was probably about one to two weeks worth of work not very diligently but it was kind of a nice project that i went out there every night took a few more things off let things set through some PB Blaster on there. And I can say that for a 15 year old car, heat and PB Blaster are gonna be your friends to get parts off. So now let's start installing the non-lift related parts on the car. All right, first we're gonna get the tie rod reinstalled. So grab the inner tie rod and go ahead and hand tighten that onto the steering rack. Then you're gonna grab your tie rod tool, go ahead and tighten that down and torque it down to its torque specification. Then go ahead and place the inner tie rod boot. Then put the tie rod nut on. And if you remember previously, we counted the number of turns it took to remove the tie rod. So I marked that and now I'm gonna do 20 turns to install this one. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the new control arm on the passenger side. So slide that in place. I used a little bit of lubricant to help those slide in. Uh, and then you're going to go replace the two bolts that held those in. They are stretch bolts. I purchased new ones for this project. So make sure you do that when you do your install. Obviously, once this is finished, then I'll need to go back, redo all the subframe, uh, and make sure that's installed properly. And finally, we're going to install some new ball joints. Uh, so with these, they're super easy to install, but do note that they are sided, uh, and these will connect directly to your control arm so go ahead and tighten down that nut and hold it in place using either an allen or torx bit and then torque it down all right i promise we're so close to getting ready to install this lift but first before we actually start to put the parts on let's assemble a few of the different assemblies for the front and rear suspension so assembling the shocks and the struts to get ready to put them on the car now for video purposes we're going to do some of this kit assembly inside for better lighting and easier to show. So first we're going to install the shock extender on the rear. Make sure when you install this to use the provided thread locker to hold that in place. Next I'm going to grab the shock mount and the bump stock and fit those together. It's a pressure fit and then also put the shock cover on and then we're going to slide that over the entire assembly. Finally we're going to fix that with the nut that holds it all in place and we will get to tightening and torquing that down later. Now for the front strut setup, you got your Bilstein strut, go ahead and slide the bump stock into place, then grab your strut cover. Next you're going to grab your compressed spring, I did that off camera because I hate using spring compressors, it freaks me out and I just want to make sure I did it right and uh, didn't video record myself injuring myself terribly so got those compressed slide that on go ahead and place your spring perch top then you're going to place the spacer then the bearing and then the keeper nut and this is what your completed front strut assembly should look like Finally, what you've been waiting for and what I've been waiting to share with you, it's time to put them on the car. So let's go do that right now. All right, so let's start to work on this install. Um, to get started, we're gonna work on the rear and start with the rear shock. So first we gotta get that keeper nut all the way tightened on top. I'm using a torque wrench and then a vice grip and a towel to make sure I don't mar the shock and cause any damage. 
After I cleaned up the bottom of the spring perch, I went ahead and inserted the new spacer. Uh, it has a nice little mill out in the bottom that fits right into the space. And then you're going to go ahead and take the plate and put that on the other side and then go ahead and torque that down. Now go ahead and grab your new spring and make sure to transfer the rubber grommet uh, that goes on top and go ahead and set that on the bottom spacer and get it in place at the top. Now because again this is not an independent rear suspension you're going to want to do both steps on both sides uh, at the same time. All right, now grab your rear shock assembly and go ahead and get that in place at the bottom. Grab a brand new bolt as well as nut to get that in place. And go ahead and then get the upper shock mount in place. You may have to compress the shock a little bit in order to help get it into place. And then replace the two bolts that you need to hold in that upper shock mount. Once you got the bottom and top in place, go ahead and tighten everything up and torque it to spec. And here's a view of the underside of that spacer since I didn't really capture that good on the first try. All right, let's move on to the front. So take your front strut assembly and place the bushing on top of it and then go ahead and get that into place. Now simultaneously I'm working with my left hand up top and trying to screw on the top nut to hold it up there. Alright now in a lot of cases if you're installing this kit you didn't do all the replacement parts that I did like the tie rod and the control arm so you may have not removed your entire hub. But in this case this is how I did it and what you'll need to do. So grab your strut spreader tool, go ahead and get that placed and then slowly work your hub onto the new strut assembly. Make sure it's aligned with the tab on the rear. You may have to move around the strut spreader to get it up into place. And once you got it aligned with the hole, you can always check that using your pinch bolt, but go ahead and then remove the strut spreader and replace the pinch bolt. The next thing I did was I reinstalled the axle while simultaneously getting that lined up with the control arm. Once the control arm was made it up, I then installed the ball joint to the control arm using the three bolts that hold it in place. Now I'm going to reinstall the tie rod, simply get that placed into the right spot and replace the nut that goes on it. You're going to go ahead and torque that down and finally you're going to get the tie rod lock nut torqued down as well. After that I moved over to the pinch bolt that holds the strut in place. So I'm tightening that up and then I'm going to torque it down. After that I move back up to the engine bay to tighten up the strut top nut. Here I'm going to just tighten it up and torque it down to its specification. Moving back down to the wheel well it's time to get the sway bar end link in place. So go ahead and replace that bolt and torque it down to spec. Now I'm coming back to the ball joint bolts and tightening those up evenly and then I'm going to torque them down. All right, now we're getting down to the final assembly pieces. So I'm gonna replace and install the new axle nut. Then I'm gonna replace the rotor. I'm gonna clean that up since I've been touching it a bunch during this project. Then I'm gonna move to installing the caliper carrier. And after the caliper carrier, we're going to install the caliper, torquing both of these units down to the right specifications, which uh, for the carrier is a pretty hefty one. All right, that's it. Well, kind of, except for you have to do it on two more sides. Uh, but that was it for the install. It went pretty smooth, straightforward. Everything fit really well. Uh, now it's just time to get the wheels bolted up and lower this thing down and see how much lift we got. It's me again. Did you really think I was going to put the car down and let you see what this lift looked like on those wimpy ass tires that are on that Beetle right now? Hell no. So first we got to get some big ass tires and some new wheels to really fit this thing out. And we're going to probably need some spacers as well as some spray paint. So let me grab that stuff and I'll be right back. All right. We are in the mom wagon, Ford Flex right now. And I'm 
going to head on over to the junkyard. All right, I'm at the lot. It's like a f***ing graveyard. Um, headed back to the import section to start and uh, we'll see what we find. So that is a 2007 Beetle with a stage three, two and a half inch lift kit on it and some pretty meaty tires as well. On those tires and wheels, I've also installed an inch spacer all around to get them to fit a little bit better because the offset on those wheels I picked up from the junkyard are not as much as I would like them to be. Probably long term, I will be looking at some different wheels to get the spacing that I really want and get them to stick out a little bit more. Now let's talk about the lift kit. Overall, install was excellent. Everything fit really, really well. Most of it was using stock parts. All of the mounting areas were all fit and come from stock or OE manufacturing partners. So there shouldn't be any reason that they don't fit. All the spacer units that were used, the precision on them was very good and I had no issues getting anything to fit. Uh, Obviously, fitment of the tires and wheels that you end up choosing are going to be subjective to what you use. Uh, I did have some rubbing and I knew that going into it, thanks to my friends over at VW High Life. They let me know that, hey, probably what you're choosing is gonna be too much. You're gonna have some rubbing and they knew exactly where it was gonna be. I took care of that. I cut out some of the fender liners. Uh, I grinded and kind of hammered back some of the metal parts that were in the way and I got them to fit. There's still more work to do. I didn't want to necessarily bore you guys with all of that work just yet. Um, so overall, totally recommend the pro product. I haven't done a ton of driving, so I can't recommend it necessarily from a uh, long-term drivability standpoint, comfort standards, or anything like that just yet. Um, but this project isn't really going for that anyway. So. Um, I'd love to answer more of your questions and cover more of that, but I really don't know what questions there are about this. It's such kind of a different project. Not that there's not other people who've done it, but uh, not a ton. So if you have comments, questions, put them down below. I'm very good about answering any comments that come in. Let me know. If you made it this far, this was a extremely long video. Uh, so thanks for watching this. And again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And I can't wait to work on another video on this project as well as all of our other projects to share with all of you. So thank you and talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.